We think that our lives are stable at some point in our life. I can't, I don't know if it's in your 20s or 30s or 40s or whatever decade, but it's not true. I mean, you're, you're evolving every day. Uh, your body's changing every day. It, it does what you give it to do, uh, whether it's eating or physical activity or things you believe in or, or things that inspire you. I'm mm -hmm. trying to, to look at all these life experiences and bring them together into whatever I'm doing today, which happens to be work with the foundation that bears, bears my name and my migratory bird work. That uh, it, it, it requires all levels of the thinking skills that I've developed over time. So migratory birds, what, what are you learning or what are you? Uh... I just felt after my space flight, it was really important for me to try the best way I could with the skill set that I had and the interest that I have to try to paint that kind of picture that I saw. I saw, I saw the Earth as a planet, and you know, we learned about it in school, but honestly, when, you, when I saw it in reality, that it, that it is a planet, I mean, there's just no getting away from it. I just wanted to come back and say, this stuff is really, really special we've got here. And so it got me interested in looking at flight, which was always my love, uh, and then looking at how astronauts are able to glide across international borders the way birds do. And how astronauts cannot see, even uh, in, in the orbits they make, the full migratory corridor of endangered species. The, my first project was the landscapes of the national parks. So I decided that I would go across Canada after my flight. After my space medicine research had reached the point where someone else could carry it on, I, I, left, uh, the, I, I left academia uh, in 1998, and I just packed up my large format cameras, four by five view cameras with bellows on and a couple of other uh, high-end cameras and went and did all the national parks in Canada as they existed at the turn of the millennium. So I was wondering if you've ever gone under the ocean or if you do, uh, you know, it must be similar to space in some ways. Uh... Yeah, it's, uh, I used to. I, I, one of the things that I did for the space program is that I had to get my PADI certificate uh, to get the underwater diving stuff because part of the bailout training is you're underwater and you have to be able to feel comfortable. Some of the space training involves being in a pool. Mm -hmm. And I think it was Buzz Aldrin that first did it. He said, you know, you can free float in the water. We should be doing some of the training for some of the spacewalk stuff in a pool situations. Now it's like big time. They've got mock-ups of the space station in there and they have very choreographed stuff. And when I was training for my space flight, we had a, an experiment on disorientation. And nothing like getting into water to disorient you mm -hmm. up, down, or backwards or forwards. And uh, we had a we were put in this tank at the Defense and Civil Institute of Environmental Medicine up uh, north of the 401 there in Downsview. And they had put a it was a, it was a big well I'd, I'd say a tank it wasn't like we we're in a tank tank it was a like a swimming pool tank but very deep. So at one end they had this target, and they they brought us in to this tank each individually and they had us uh, neutrally buoyant. So in the middle of this tank, we had no perception. And then they would tell us to close our eyes and point to a target. And then they would sort of turn us around as the scuba divers in the tank would turn us around. Turn, and then they would ask a point again. Well, of course, by this time, you have no gravity sensors that are worth, worth any money uh, to be able to figure out, well, I'm, is it left? Is it right? And where did they move me to? Did I go to the right? Did I go upside down? And so, I mean, obviously the target pointing was crazy and nonsense. I mean, it was all over the place. So there was that part of the training, but uh, I found that uh, after I was injured in the space program a year before I flew, it really has precluded me from a lot of heads up work. So I don't really feel that comfortable putting tanks on because you really need to be able to look around and and to be safe and, and to keep people with you safe. So um, I, I know you do a lot of photography. Uh, do you do any other art painting or <laughs> other? Uh... That's probably why I do photography. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's painting with light. I see, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, there's texture, there's light, there's, <clears throat> excuse me, shapes. I'm big on shapes. And after my space flight, uh, the oblique plane is, is hugely important to me because when, when one's floating in space, uh, one's just an object, uh, just like a piece of dust. And so the air currents will move a person around and you kind of get used to seeing things that for us down here on Earth, we think they're upside down. Uh, I've always challenged people to walk in the opposite direction. They're used to walking for their exercise, go in the opposite direction. They'll see a different 
perspective of a house or a garden and they'll see things they didn't see before but also start sensitizing people to actually look at things and and i just found that that kind of bonding uh, is important so when we see things that are not on the horizontal or the vertical they become quite attractive to us uh, spokes in a bicycle wheel uh, things that are in in three dimensions we really like so those are the elements that we're trying to take into account but through my space experience i find that uh, perspectives are, are different for me now i like the broad uh, expanse that i could see out, out the window of the planet so i like to take panoramas uh, or if I'm dealing with some some greens I like looking at cascading greens uh, that is not just a plant here and a plant there and a plant here it's trying to create the space for them so it involves me moving my position around up down left right coming back when there's a different light coming back when it's a different season and also in the, the, the foundation, uh, the Roberta Bonder Foundation, we have programs that are based on photography because all kids and most adults have access to a phone that has a camera on it. Uh, but we've been trying to train people to look at, look at things, not just glance at them and take a picture. We try to talk about the elements of the natural environment and challenge people to take an artistic image. So you, um, uh, you're a neurologist. Did, did you do a lot of that uh, practical work, or uh, did you end up uh, getting into the space program before you? Uh... I used quite a bit of it because, as even one's a resident in neurology, using neurology all the time. And then I also did. I subspecialized in a, a field called neuroophthalmology, which is really the visual part of the uh, of, of the brain and eye and the nerve that connects the brain to the visual cortex at the back. Uh, when I finally completed my neuroophthalmology training in Boston and I came back to Toronto to do some of it, uh, I just found that the work that I was doing, uh, it wasn't fulfilling the complete dream that I had from the time I was young. And I saw this thing in the newspaper and heard on the radio that we're going to have this astronaut program. And I just felt that that was the time that everything was coming together. Uh, my physical my physical health, uh, my academic preparation, the skill set that I had developed, the interpersonal skills, language. And I thought, I'm in the right place to do this. But will they, I didn't even think, will they accept a woman? I didn't even think about that. Uh, even with the American program, I didn't think, hey, these are all men. I just thought these were human beings. And it was only later in the space program when people started going on about me being the only woman. I thought, like, what? I'm a person. I'm a Canadian. I'm a, like a human being that has these credentials. Why are you harping on this? Because the more you harp on that, the less people are going to see that I'm. I had far more qualifications yeah. than than other people uh, who were applying for the program. And that's why I was selected. So it always bothered me when people started going into that area, which yeah. was. Well, I really appreciate you taking time to chat with me today. I'm uh, thrilled, thrilled to meet you in person and to, to chat and um, really, really uh, appreciate it. Well, thanks very much, Ken. Yeah, that and, I, and, great. and I, I promised myself I, I wouldn't talk about windows, no. but what kind of window is on the on the shuttle? Like what? Uh... Well, it's, a, it's, it's quite interesting. The, the, they're optical glass. I mean, they're so, there's, there's just perfect glass. Of course, you can imagine how dirty they get. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. and, I know that uh, for some of the stuff uh, in the early work when they were up in space and different types of equipment that had to be used to point out uh, to the earth or whatever, the astronauts always wear sunglasses because there's a lot of uh, UV coming through that window that we're usually protected with down here on Earth. Oh, I just always picture it being uh, dark, but uh, I guess I guess not. No, no, it's, no, uh, no. I mean, we wouldn't be able to take pictures of the planet if yeah, it was dark all yeah, the time. Yeah. But, uh, although there are some good night shots and good aurora shots. But certainly at the space station, there are a lot of windows. That was the one thing they they never did very well, uh, even for the space shuttle. Uh, down in the space lab, we had one small one small window at the back. Should I give them a call, you think? <laughs> <laughs> Too late for the shuttle, but <laughs> yeah. space station, they've got a big thing called the cupola, which actually gives a much uh, a much bigger view. We used to only be able to see like 1,200 kilometers out, out the window, uh, but now they can see they can see pretty much a nice, uh, a, a much wider view of, of the planet uh, than than you could that we could before especially now with all these cameras they've got